like to welcome you to the Thursday, April 11, 2019 <coughs> meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Let me call the meeting to order. The board does not write the zoning ordinance, but does have the authority to grant relief from it where practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship would result. The board will vote on each agenda item following a public hearing. Use variance requests re require a minimum of six affirmative votes in order to grant the requested variances. Non-use variance requests require a minimum of five affirmative votes in order to grant, grant the variances. If you would like to request that, your, that the board table or adjourn your case due to the absence of a full board, you must inform the chairperson immediately following the public hearing, but that will not be the case this evening as we do have a full board. Petitioners, please do your best to limit your presentations to 10 minutes, and each participant in the public hearing, please do your best to limit your comments to three minutes. With that being said, that moves us along to the approval of the minutes for the March 14th, 2019 meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Other than Mr. Curtis showing up twice. Yeah. He was worth two times. <laughs> I just thought I counted him twice. Oh, See the problem. No, <laughs> no, I'm for dabs. As long as you don't count his vote twice. Vote support five times. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And Mr. Murphy, we do not have any older unfinished business, I believe. Correct. All right, so that uh, moves us along to our first item of new business, which is item D1, which is case number 190410. Do you want to read this into the record? Do you want me to, since you're down, or? Just jump into the, we can just jump into the report. That's okay. fine. Go ahead, We sir. don't need to read the intro. Uh, this property is located at the corner of Woodward Avenue and Lincoln Avenue. It has a one-way drive approach off of Woodward that leads to the uh, side street henry boulevard it recently went to the planning commission for site plan approval with the contingency that they received necessary variances from the zoning board of appeals that's why they're here tonight they received approval to construct a full second story addition as well as a partial third floor uh, or small mezzanine addition to create a, a partial third floor the 12 foot one week one way drive aisle off of Woodward Avenue leads to 13 off street parking spaces, uh, which are angled towards Henry Boulevard. The drive aisle also leads to the staging area to gain access to an automated parking structure that which contains 21 off street parking spaces. The automated parking structure has three levels of parking above grade and one parking of uh, one level of parking below grade structure does not have any internal drive aisles or ramps it's entirely automated <clears throat> hopefully you had the opportunity to look at the manufacturer's website or some of their YouTube videos to have an understanding of how it functions uh, is it a user which wants to gain access would pull up to what's always the one available space to gain access to the structure itself they would drive into the structure onto a steel platform for their vehicle. They'd exit the vehicle. They'd walk across, across a raised platform for that particular uh, slot in the structure. They would exit the structure and uh, enter a security code, and the code would initiate a series of automated lifts that would place the vehicle into an open space within the structure. So. The user does not use utilize drive aisles or ramps to gain access to spaces. It's entirely automated. And the reverse process obviously is true to gain uh, access to your car when you want to get it and leave. The city's zoning ordinance doesn't have standards specific, specific to automated parking structures. They are uh, a rather rarity, um, and we don't have any specific standards. We do, however, have standards which relate to the minimum size of parking spaces, whether they be surface parking spaces located in a traditional parking structure or, in this case, in an automated parking structure. Uh, the petitioners, or the manufacturer's website references individual platforms that can vary in size to accommodate different width, length, and weight vehicles. I have referenced in the report the size the width and length requirement, or width and length of the different types of platforms that they have, small, medium, large, and extra large. The illustrations that were provided by the petitioner reference a parking width of each of the spaces of eight and a half feet, and that's from the edge of the metal platform from one edge to the other. We require a parking width 
uh, for a space a width of nine feet. So they're seeking a variance of that difference, that slight difference. We do require a parking space length or depth of 20 feet. And if you refer to the transverse section of the drawings that were provided by the petitioner, the smallest, uh, shortest space is the one that sinks below grade, and that's at 18 feet wide. So it does not meet the 20 foot minimum length requirement. They're seeking a variance for that. The zoning ordinance is silent or does not have requirements for the height clearance for vehicles. But you can see from the petitioner, the petitioner's cross section of the structure itself, that it ranges in height from about seven feet for the spaces at grade, six and a half feet of clearance height at, uh, excuse me, seven feet for below grade, six and a half feet for at grade, five and a half feet for the second level, and seven and a half feet on the third level. So it varies considerably on which vehicle height it's able to accept and place in what location. If you take into consideration a mid standard mid-size sedan is, is about five feet in height or less, a full-size truck is certainly at oftentimes in excess of six feet in height. The zoning ordinance also doesn't have any standards with regard to the weight capacity for individual parking spaces since we don't have anything relative to automated structures. But it is important to note that the manufacturer's website references that the maximum weight capacity that they're able to accept per individual platform or space is 5,200 pounds. A full-size uh, SUV or pickup truck, pickup truck oftentimes exceeds 6,500 pounds. So it does limit the number of vehicles that are able to gain access to the, to the automated parking spaces. Based on the petitioner's floor plan, they require a total of 44 parking spaces. They're proposing 13 surface spaces, 21. <clears throat> 21 in the structure, the automated structure, so they're still short or deficient by 10 parking spaces. They would need a variance of, uh, of 10 if you recognized the variance request for the size of the parking spaces within the structure. They still need a variance for the total number on top of that. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Murphy? Yes, ma'am. Um, one of my questions, Joseph, is how, do you know what the time turnover is to park a car? Like, if everyone came to work at once mm -hmm. and then you might have a stacking problem going out on the street, it's just. Sure, the petitioner can provide a little bit more uh, in depth perspective from what they've gotten from the manufacturer. I've watched some videos from the manufacturer and read some material and it seems as though it's around the range of two two to three or four minutes to gain access for a vehicle yes ma'am joseph is this 44 required spaces net of the seven we granted a couple years ago or are we starting from starting scratch? fresh starting okay. starting from scratch different plan okay and the um size variance for the spaces it's specifically limited to that parking structure. Yes, correct. correct. Okay. Yes, they were able to accomplish the minimum size requirements for the surface spaces. Any other questions? <clears throat> All right, not seeing any. Are the petitioners present? Yes. Please come forward. How are you? Well, yourself, sir. My name is Luis Antonio Uribe again. I'm the head lead designer for 5-1 Design the architecture firm putting in this proposal. Uh, first of all, we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to present. Um, what One of the main things that we talked about um, on the previous uh, planning commission was that, uh, and discussing it with, with Joe, um, is that this technology is coming. Uh, I don't know if you know, but the Hudson Tower is using the same technology, the same manufacturer, but for 192 parking spaces. So Detroit would get this. It was already approved. It's part of that project. And, uh, and Joe, we talked about this, is uh, Royal Oak Steel is losing a lot of office space, uh, really cutting edge office space to Detroit. And we want to beat Detroit on, on being the first parking structure in Michigan. Uh, there's already examples around the U.S. <coughs> of where these same manufacturers, these same uh, parking structures being 
Uh, it's already in use and has been used for many years. New York and LA are where they are most. And, um, and we actually become uh, first on many things. So it's, 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 the, it's the first parking puzzler. We think that when uh, automatic parking, uh, automatic cars or autonomous vehicles are gonna happen, uh, this is what is gonna be all over the place. So we are thinking ahead of what is the future and how we can resolve efficiently uh, parking problems. And I know that Royal Oak is facing a lot of those problems. We think also that the building architecturally is beautiful. We really thought about creating an icon on Woodward for Royal Oak. It's beautiful everywhere, but really Royal Oak doesn't have an entrance uh, from Woodward 696 in that place. So we think that this building becomes kind of the grand entrance to Royal Oak and a presence. So all the buildings on that area of Woodward are very low, one stories. So we're thinking that we're creating an, a very beautiful architecture piece to enhance that uh, feature that we have. We believe that, uh, that we're respecting, we're doing a very unique design, uh, but also keeping technologies and, and materials that are very warm and they're not crazy modern. So it's a combination of very interesting uh, patterns of brick and, uh, and, and different materials. And also how we are handling the height. It actually um, the, is not a whole three stories, but we are actually having this, this, uh, this interesting triangle form that actually reacts and, and respects and how we're rotating the, the building, it actually gives you different views. It's not just a big wall in front of, of the neighborhood. So we're really focusing of, of, on that, of how we are actually uh, creating a piece of architecture that is gonna be a, a beautiful uh, thing to see. <clears throat> and then putting features like this, and also, I don't know if you read, but also we're trying to be the first commercial Tesla roof in Michigan. There's already Tesla roofs in houses in Michigan, but no commercial building that has Tesla roof. So part of the architecture also is we are, we are angling perfectly the, the, the building and the roof so we can take advantage of the sun and using the Tesla roof. So it's very unique in many ways. And the Cipriani family really has put an effort on, on taking this uh, farther. Uh, if you see the previous petition of 2016, with the current regulations and with, with just the variance for the seven parking spaces, it was really a half second floor. So going through all this, this um, investment, they, they say, well, how can we maximize it? And I think we have actually balanced about uh, ROI, obviously, because they're investing millions on creating this architecture piece, but also a beauty and technology and cutting edge uh, processes. So that's what we're proposing. Any questions for the petitioner? Yeah, I'm just, sure. I'm looking at what we were given mm -hmm. and it says about, uh, was not submitted, the petitioners provided drawings regarding the structure of the parking, but has not referenced the model. I'm just reading what we were given. Uh, and I'm not sure because then it describes, I think from the manufacturer, some sizes of platforms. Uh, the smallest one is 7.8 feet wide, and the medium one is 8 feet wide. But the longest one is only 17 feet wide, I think, from the, what I understand this is from the manufacturer. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how you made the decision to ask for half a foot of width and two feet of length, because I don't see how that fits at all with what these platform measurements are. So at that point, uh, let me tell a little bit how it goes. Um, this, the, the manufacturer actually takes a long time. Uh, they're from LA, so they put together the, but their species come in from many places from the world and then they assemble in, in Los Angeles. So at that time we didn't have a, 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 a lot of, first of all, we didn't have a contract with them. Now we have signed a, a preliminary contract and they actually gave us shop drawings. So now we could decide a little bit more. So what we have decided on this type of, of, uh, of parking puzzler, they have two models. And the, the models that they have is having two levels of SUV, SUV capable uh, parking spaces 
above ground or two levels, one down and then the first, the first floor. And since we didn't want to have those big trucks flying, we, want, we decided to go with a deeper basement. So we're going to go with the basement with, uh, with uh, SUVs and then the second level, and then you have two more levels for normal cars. But the, the, the structure by itself, it actually moves the cars according to what, what you need to do. So the model, it is the, what we presented later when the revision is the eight foot five by 17. That is enough for an SUV. You cannot park the big trucks that, uh, that Joe was mentioning about. Uh, it's intended that this is gonna be just for employees so it's not going to be for visitors. And about what you mentioned, uh, actually we changed the direction of the, of the, of the access uh, through Woodward. This is something that I discussed with Joe, to actually have idle spaces on the property. So you, you actually, the, the driving road becomes the idle, the idle uh, uh, process. Mm -hmm. and, and although it could take two minutes, for this model, uh, the manufacturer told us that it's going to be from 30 to 45 seconds to retrieve your car once you are in there, because it's it's not as massive. And one of the things, since we're limited for that, the people that are going to be leasing the space or working in the building, then we can manage also that time so to prevent issues of, of idling. We can, we can actually tell them, okay, you have one parking space, part of your rent, and, and this is that kind of schedule that you, that you can have or you will have to, to actually manage this. Uh, just to follow up, so I think I heard you say the platforms that you ordered are eight and a half feet wide, 17 feet long. Uh, yes, it's for the SUV. You have two levels of SUV. But I'm, I'm pointing out that you're asking for a two foot variance from a 20 foot long, so we haven't gotten there yet. You, you really need three feet, is what I'm and, pointing out. And again, that's for parking spaces where people actually uh, are walking and moving around and opening doors. This is totally automatic, so there's no people on the third level opening doors or walking around, so it's really you need the space for the car. And uh, it is safe on that one. You, you can only access and park on one space, we have actually defined it. That is the one that it's on the, on the accessing road. Uh, so that's why what Joe was saying, it doesn't apply on this, on this process because it doesn't work the same way. Uh, yeah. My interest in the discussion is what we're being asked to vote on is not what you need, apparently, according to what I'm being told about the schematics. If we look at this particular schematic on the screen, slow to catch up. You'll see, a little bit fuzzy, but you'll see on the lower level, the platform measures 17 feet. There's a little bit of, uh, of overhang in this portion here where it gains that extra foot. When I scale the drawings, that's where I, I measure from this wall here to the edge of a clearance as it's coming up, and that's 18 feet. And the inside of the a pump point here. So it's so what's being asked for is adequate according to the city. Well, the platform the platform <laughs> itself may be 17 feet, but it has a little bit of an overhang uh -huh. below, which gets it that length of 18. We require 20. So, so my answer is kind of short. a yes or no question. Definitely no. <laughs> it's, it's it's a no. They don't meet the minimum size requirement. The platform itself is 17. It does have that foot overhang. We count that foot because as the vehicle rises, it has that clearance. So a two foot variance would meet the what's, what we're being yes. shown. Yes, correct. Thank you. And, and just uh, to mention the inside to inside uh, uh, wall space, uh, we talked about the, the one going down, for example, that that's what the one that was referenced, is 20 feet 10 inches and you don't have any columns in front of the cars or behind it, so it's actually 20 foot 10, the clearance of, of the actual space around the car. The platform, the mechanics that moves the car is 17, but really the space mm -hmm. is 20 feet 10 from concrete to finish wall to concrete finish wall. Thank you. As a matter of fact, I've got Anthony first, then Mr. Clatt, then Mr. Kroll, then Ms. Anderson. Um, I didn't see any plans really of the inner office 
and I'm guessing you don't have it yet, but is there any idea of how many, is there already someone lined up to lease this space if it was to be built out and how many employees were they planning on having? Um, or is that unknown right now? It's unknown and basically what, that was one of the conditions of the approval that we cannot submit for the permit of the, of the second floor until we actually build 100% the parking structure. So we can, we have not gone, we actually gonna present first the permit set for the parking structure. Right, but sometimes and people come before us and they have someone No, we don't have up. yet. Okay. It's, it's intended to be white box right now. And there was a second floor plan submitted on the original package that you can see that we're just designing a, a conference room and a kitchenette. And it's gonna be white box right now. Okay for future to, to actually rent, build to run. Okay, no. Mr. Clack. Uh, can you explain your hardship for the parking shortage? Uh, the reality is that, that uh, first of all, we didn't wanna go higher on, on, the, on the levels of this. The parking postular, the technology for this, uh, that is the one that puzzles uh, for this brand. We did investigate and research the best company to to be doing this for us, and City Lift was the one that really everybody. We even hired a specialist on parking structure. We, I I told Joe that we actually started doing a parking a two level parking structure there, a normal concrete uh, precast parking structure, and and when we looked at it, is that that. Uh, that how the building was working, how what the things that the space that we want to create, um, that this is the maximum that they can do on on six spaces by four levels. They cannot go higher or they can go lower. So this is the maximum that they offer on this on this technology. The only thing that we could do is put another parking uh, uh, structure, uh, but but there's no space for it. Or I guess you could condense the square footage a bit too to reduce that variance. Like uh, the, the only thing that and we discuss about this is that is we have a mezzanine uh, that that at, at the beginning we only had uh, three species variances with the whole second floor uh, built and that mezzanine was was uh, because on, on the corner uh, we added a mezzanine that is going to be considered just for for conference room or something something common space so uh, they are considering the mezzanine as a as a as a, uh, as a rentable space, and that's what took us to to seven spaces. So, uh, we we thought since you had already approved seven, uh, three was okay. But then we we discussed about the mezzanine. He said, "Well, no, we need to consider it." Uh, at the end, uh, we think that that uh, the benefits of what this brings to Royal Oak uh, oversees what is the what is uh, out there. Uh, what what are the you have already approved uh, or in 2016-7 parking spaces and uh, and so we really think that we worked for the design to really uh, be respectful to the surroundings and and how it actually uh, relates or talks to to the neighborhood the materials that we're choosing uh, we think that that uh, in the future more and more cars are gonna be different. Even 15 years from now, uh, it's gonna be very different. And there, everybody is gonna to have to actually rewrite their, their zoning requirements because I'm sure uh, this technology or others are gonna be uh, that same autonomous vehicle is gonna go and park in one of these here in downtown. It doesn't by itself, it doesn't have to be it right there. So, so again, we're thinking on the future, we think we are uh, and 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 we know the Royal Oak has been very progressive on their way of uh, of addressing height and density and things like that, and and I think that we can work together to to make this happen. I guess and just oh, I'm sorry. last question, just to be clear, there's no physical shield of those cars when they're in the structure from let's say Hendry. Uh, not right now, not right now. Uh, we think that cars are parked. Like like cars, we could put a physical shield, but I think it would. Uh, the beauty of this and the attraction is this is kind of this high tech thing that moves cars and things like that, and and but it's actually not towards the residence; it's towards the uh, no view really. It's towards the the parking space. So, uh, so I think that uh, that that's why we didn't put it right now. 
I think that the beauty of the mechanics and what this technology is is what what is actually interesting, and it's it's hundred uh, percent safe, and, and and nobody can go into those spaces or anything. So uh, I've talked to Joe. They ask you when you buy these structures to pay in advance for a year of maintenance. So so there's no this part of the contract. You cannot say no. So they con constantly are maintaining the. The, the system and making sure that it works, uh, that we're covering it because the only thing that they ask us is obviously for snow purposes not to to um, to have it uh, 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 open to the atmosphere, but the, whatever on the front, there's no requirements for the functionality of the parking. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm not sure I heard a hardship in that whole spiel, but let's move on. Uh, I have a concern with 50%. It sounds like the, the um, parking spaces being able to take SUVs and the others taking cars, where I don't want to get too far into the future and try to imagine what this might bring, but we, we know in the, in the kind of the present, they're not going to be making a whole lot of cars anymore, at least in, in Detroit. So how if, uh, you know, I, I think I heard the figure 90% SUVs at, at some point down the road here. Um, so how do you deal with 50% parking for cars when they're saying there's not going to be any cars? It was, it, it, I actually, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's crossovers. Crossovers are much smaller than a Tahoe SUV, uh, and a, a crossover would fit. Will fit in the would car. Fit, yes, yes. Go ahead, Ms. Anderson next. So I'm just, this is probably a question for both Joseph and the petitioner, having to do with that the extra three car spaces, instead of seven, they want 10. Is that because of that mezzanine area? Or is it because of that glassed in area that's kind of like an open um, entrance? I'm not really sure. I can I look think and that's see if I can't find a spreadsheet that calculated uh, the floor plan to determine whether that it was, we'll say, the mezzanine that pushed them over to require that 10 more spaces or not. <coughs> I don't know off the top of my head. Is that, I guess that's what I'm a little concerned about because seven spaces was a bit of a stretch. And now 10, because I drove around there and I'm thinking, where would one park if they needed an extra 10? And all I could see was Hendry. The hoods. All right, any other questions for Mr. Murphy? Or for the petitioner? All right, so I'm going to ask you to take a seat real quickly so I can go ahead and open up the uh, public hearing. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you kindly. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the ZBA on this matter? I think, yes, sir. Tom Overly, 729 Hendry, right across the street. When they came, uh, what was that, a couple months ago, and uh, with, with their first proposal, uh, there was a problem with the headlights facing right into my house. And it seems that they've addressed that with the uh, walls at the at the end of each um, parking space, which I'm really glad that they did that. I, I applaud that. Um, but as far as the automated parking structure is concerned, um, I don't think that people are going to use it. Is there any any assurances that the people are really going to come and park in that thing <coughs> instead of on the street? To me, it's a lot easier to just park on the street, get out of your car, and go in the building. Why, why would I go through that? And if you pay for one year for maintenance, what happens after the one year. Let's say it breaks down. Is there any incentive to fix it? Why would I spend that money? You just let the people park on the street. The reason that concerns me is because of uh, Common Ground. When Common Ground came in, they said, we'll park on our parking lot. No problem. We'll even stadium park to keep from being on the street. Well, that lasted about a week. Now they park on the street. So there's a problem when the leaf uh, pickup comes. There's a problem when the, when the uh, street sweeper comes. So um, you want to put this technology in? That's great. I just 
want to feel comfortable that the people are actually going to use it. Are they going to be forced to use it? Uh, I don't know how you could do that, but just that's my concern. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. All right, I will go ahead and close the public hearing, bring it back to this side of the table for additional discussion. And, sir, why don't you come back up to the microphone in case we have any additional questions for you. <coughs> yes, sir. Um, I don't know if I have a motion just yet, and I'm just going to discuss. Um, I think, actually, the parking is a nice, unique solution for the problem that Woodward has, which is not enough parking for a lot of these uh, places. However, and it seems like they've brought this hardship on themselves considering they put all the extra space in there that requires all this extra parking. So I'm having a hard time granting them variance that they walked right into themselves. But I appreciate what they're trying to do of trying to uh, uh, reinvigorate and, and, and reutilize this building more so. Um, so I'm sort of torn right now. I definitely have no problem with the first two variances if we pass it with the parking structure because whatever the parking structure needs, it, it needs. Bigger thing is the number of parking spaces. That's that's the one that I'm, I'm going over with right now. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. When I looked at this, A and B to me were almost like nine issues. These are very common if you go to New York City or what have you. And obviously, the narrow width really doesn't make any difference because you're stacking the cars. They could be six inches apart. You don't need to open the doors. You know, so, but again, it does boil down to, you know, the, the 10, and that's really the only number that gave me any heartache also. And, and I'm sorry, can I, and I understood you to say that's the biggest puzzler that can fit on this site. Yes. A second puzzler can't fit on this site? Uh, if we put it towards Henry, yes, but then it, it would be, again, we didn't want to, we, we think that design, we were very cautious of minimizing yeah. that look towards yeah. the right. residential street. Thank you. Yes, sir. I, say, I brought up the square footage earlier, but I, I understand what you're doing. And the second floor stacks directly on top of the first floor, so that makes a lot of sense from, from a lot of aspects. So really the only possible reduction is that mezzanine area. That's the one place that they are deviating from. So I just wanted to point that out. That's, it seems logical the way they're stacking the spaces on top of the building. And I agree, too, with items A and B. I have no issues with those either because it seems to make sense. It's an engineered solution, and I assume they thought about the modern car. And, and I agree with your point, too, about there's no people in this, so it doesn't need that extra space for door openings, things like that. So yeah. is would the mezzanine then take up that extra three spaces from the previous seven? Space I, wasn't, I, I wasn't able to find a spreadsheet. I think what we had done was when the petitioner provided us with a paper copy of the drawings, which are probably back at the office. Oh. Uh, I didn't bring all the paper copies. We had probably noted on there the square footage of each portion of the floor plan, including the mezzanine. That would allow us to figure out how much square footage is specifically dedicated to the mezzanine. I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, my computer's running slower. If uh, well, perhaps our resident architects are able to look at the mezzanine and see that if there's a reference oh, to square sure. footage on there, yeah, please we do can that. divide that by. Mezzanine again. square footage gross is 824 uh, based upon their GI 000. We required one parking space for 225 square feet. So that's, that's, that's three, three plus. plus. Yeah. Yes. So that would take us theoretically back to the seven that we were at before because the mezzanine is just open space. Right. Yeah. For the prior variance. And, and the, the mezzanine, variance, I, right, underst right. I understood, is common space. It is not adding more tenants. No. It is space for intention. the tenants to enjoy. That's right now what it shows. But however, whoever goes in there can use it however they see fit. They can throw that as open space if they want. That, and, and that's why we had calculated it's not mm. extra space. It's space that can be used for whatever purpose if it wants to be cubicles and stack people in there or if they want to use it as a kitchenette or an open conference room they can do it's the flexibility we don't dictate that in the zoning ordinance mm -hmm. yes sir one of the things that's playing on my mind right now is uh, if there was a if the second floor was leased and we understood who they were but this number could go from Five to thirty, you know, really depending on if you if you rented a uh, to RPM over there with their five hundred people uh, in in a, in a space about four feet apiece, uh, obviously that parking number would go way up. 
one of my concerns is a lot of places on Woodward, there's places to hide cars without going into the neighborhood. There are no places to hide cars on this particular plot. So uh, I, I'm really having trouble dealing with the unknown here. I, I, I do have a question since I don't see it on the floor plans at all. Uh, is there any mechanical rooms planned? Because I don't see anything. The mechanical room is uh, uh, existing. It's on the first floor. Okay, so nothing and, planned for the second and, uh, floor. And the new mechanical units would be on the flat roof area. That's why it goes down. So it doesn't uh, and, change. And, that's, and there would be there. The square footage. Uh, I was just figuring because if there's any kind of mechanical space that's right. just not shown, right. that yeah, square footage that right. removes their right. any IDF rooms. Or and and we actually, or yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's common areas and there's circulations that we could, that definitely would, at that point, would reduce it, but... But again, it's, it's, we are very tied into not doing anything on the, on the second floor until we actually build this. It was a condition by the Planning Commission to, to, to do that. Mr. Curtis. I, I'd like to make a motion. Please do. Move to uh, grant these waivers as requested. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll support for discussion's sake. Mr. Curtis. Well, I, th I have the impression that A and B, as they are not a, an issue to me, C is the discussion here. Um, as I look at this, I think the technology is very attractive. I think it's one of the things that's going to bring you tenants just because it's cool, just because it's new, just because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's very attractive. I think people will use it. That's not my concern. I think that the design is clearly for common space, and yes, I'm not worried about who rents it because the ordinance is about parking spaces per square feet. That's that's what we're dealing with here. Um, we had it set up to give seven, a waiver of seven spaces three years ago before I came. The addition of the mezzanine requires they ask for 10. It's really designed to be common space. I don't think it's going to add more cars. So I think it's a great plan. I think it's going to be a lovely corner. Mr. Olfak. Um, I have heartburn with going from 7 to 10. I, I'm still concerned with the 7, but I, we granted them previously, so I'm willing to leave it on that. I almost want to say they could theoretically still do the mezzanine, not put in the stair, and then wait until they see whoever their tenant is and then size it based on that to get to the 7 spaces per it. Because if there's no access to the top of there, it doesn't count, um, even if it's just ladder access. Um, so I'm still torn on this one because I think I, I have no problem with the 7, but the 10 is pushing it. Now, this is a design that I think we're seeing more and more when it comes to how office spaces are used, where you have sole practitioners within a professional setting, and then they have one common area so that if you happen to have a client coming and you need that common space or somebody else in the building needs that common space, it's flex space for all the people. I don't see it adding additional people, but creating a space where as a sole practitioner, if you're going to meet with two or three people for an hour, you've got that common space, and then when you're done, you go back to your office. Mr. Clatton. You know, I tend to agree. We, I worked in a similar office in Birmingham for 10 years, so we had a little mezzanine space, two staircases. And it, was a, it was a quiet place to get away to think, to host a small meeting. So I tend, and, and the overall space isn't excessive where you're going to jam 30 cubicles up there. I would like to point out that you probably could keep your same building look, feel from the exterior without the mezzanine. But now that I look at this in more detail, I really don't have an issue with it. So I, I, I'll be in support as well. I've got Anthony next to Mr. Kroll. The only concern with, I don't think the mezzanine is accessible to all because there is no elevator for it, so it would be any only able bodies access to it, which is one thing. Mr. Kroll. Uh, I'm certainly struggling with this, um, whereas I think it's kind of cool. I think I tend to agree with the guy that said no one's going to use that thing. I think I would probably find a parking pot on the street as opposed to jumping in that thing. So um, I, I'm not necessarily not going to vote for it because of that, but, but I think there's some validity to that. 
Can, can I just, uh, on, that, on that sense, again, I wanted to repeat this is intended for the people uh, that are going to be workers or uh, of the offices. So it could be part of the, of the internal regulations of this, of, of you. Or you you're getting, it's on your lease. You need to make your employees. It could be part of those, of those, uh, of those uh, regulations. So catch visitors me, are not intended. Me if you can. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm struggling with this too. I, since we've previously done seven, I, I'm I'm okay with doing that. I just tend to agree with Anthony. I, I it just seems. I, it's just difficult for me to make the the extra three leap, especially when they're bringing it. I, I I see it as bringing it on themselves. I mean, it's the the design is what's necessitating it, and it's the design that they created. So that's it, it, that's where I'm struggling too. Any other comments? Well, I'll just point out we're talking about Woodward, and this is every business on Woodward needs parking vari variances. And here we are again, and we want Woodward to be a strong place in Royal Oak. With a great architecture piece that is the entrance to this great city. Any other comments? Do I see your hand, Anthony? Thank you for one minute. Uh, it's, it's and you I'm, are, sir? I'm Steve Saporn. It's, it's my company, and my wife and I own the building. So, yeah, the sir, on the microphone, if you want so everybody get help you hear you, too. Our employees actually are, are excited about it because it means they would not have their car in the elements. So during the winter, they wouldn't have to come out and scrape their cars down. So most of them are excited about this. And in terms of who's going to park there, they're going to be told to park there. I mean, that's just the way it is. Well, the addition is for our company. My wife and I started a company in our fourth bedroom in our colonial house. And over 10 years, we have 28 employees now. And uh, because we're in healthcare, the, um, there's been many changes. There's a lot more paperwork than we ever had to worry about before. And so we're planning to move our accounting staff upstairs and, and our legal staff. This building's just going to house you then, both yeah, floors? Yeah, basically. It's, uh, both floors are going to be our business. Well, we asked that question earlier, didn't we, about who's going to house yeah, it? Occupant. Yeah, so I mean. So how many staff do you have right now? And how many? 28 people. And you envision how many? And of the 28 people, 12 of them are in the field 90% of the time. We, we have a very strange, it's a, a cottage business. We take care of individuals who have suffered some sort of brain trauma. So most of them are auto. Some would be um, veterans who maybe had a problem in Afghanistan. Uh, we've been called in to look at NFL cases, and we have medical malpractice folks. Oxygenoxia affects the brain. Sometimes it's mental illness, and sometimes it has to do with substance abuse. But all of them have mental illnesses, and um, what we do is we, my staff is out there on a weekly basis seeing the clients. So once a month, everybody comes in to meet and talk about all the cases. The rest of the time, they're on the road. But we just don't have the, the space anymore. And um, we're looking for an area where you know, our, our group can come in and work together. And, um, and I think this accomplishes it quite well. Mr. Clyde. Oh, just one question. Do you have a large number of visitors that frequent the space, or is it no. your staff? No, just staff. You said 29? It's 28 people. 28. And um, for the most part, some of them would be criminally insane. So. Our doors are locked, basically, but we, they don't come because they're all institutionalized. Okay. So then what, what would the mezzanine space, would you plan on using it for? Uh, I think you kind of captured it. It's okay. an area where even now we, we call it the, the Zen Garden. In front of our building, we have a, a garden area where, you know, you can look out there. And this is stressful business. Um, you know, there's, we get a call, someone's having a stroke, someone's having this problem or that problem, the police are there because of something. And so sometimes people just need to get up and sit by themselves for a little bit. And, you know, that's, we want to give them that space. Well, oh, thank you for explaining that, sir. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions for this gentleman? I, so let me get this clear. The employees, not the patients, are going to be at the building or... Yes. Bo or both? No, 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 no patients. Okay. Patients are in institutions. Okay. We go to the institutions. Well, when you said that they that they need to go upstairs in a little Zen moment, I wasn't. That's quite... the employees. Okay. I just I want mean, to make it's... sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if if you get a stress call like that, I mean, okay. you have to sometimes make a decision on the moment, and um, and it can be life and death.
All right, any other questions? Well, we've got a motion on the table. I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Yeah. Are you an A? I didn't, yeah, okay, so. All right, the motion passes. You're all set. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can dig up the second case. <laughs> Might take a minute. This is right across the street from my first condo that I bought. So weird. <laughs> You're coming full circle. I know. It's really we were driving around looking at him this afternoon. Looking out the audience, it looks like a PTA meeting from 20 minutes or 20 years ago. <laughs> I thought I got away from PTA. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if it's the bride side or the groom side, actually. <laughs> <laughs> These computerized cars go over and reboot. Okay. <laughs> okay, excellent. All right, so we will move along to our second item of new business, which is item number D2, case number 190411, public hearing on the appeal of Royal Oak Place LLC, petitioner and owner for the following variances. There's a handful of them, so I will mm -hmm. hand the ball off to you, Mr. Murphy. Sure. This property is located on 13 Mile Road. It's zoned multiple family residential, and it uh, contains a two-story apartment building with a total of 42 dwelling units. The petitioner is proposing to convert some existing floor area, which is was currently or was used utilized for a lobby and a second floor office a management office into an additional dwelling unit with two bedrooms. They're also looking to modify the parking lot, demolish a storage building, and construct a refuse enclosure or a dumpster enclosure. And I'll reference the aerial photograph to illustrate the location of the interior modifications. And it's this portion of the building that fronts along 13 Mile. They're doing, uh, they're proposing again to add an additional two bedroom apartment unit. Under the zoning ordinance, a site plan review is required if a nonconformity is expanded or modified in a way which increases its nonconformity. We also require a review for any modifications to a parking lot. Uh, that are being proposed for a parking lot. So the petitioner <coughs> is proposing to modify the parking lot and relocate, uh, restripe the parking lot. We need to ensure that it meets the current ordinance requirements in terms of the size of the parking spaces, the aisleways, and the first variance request, which is requiring a screening wall at the property line adjacent to the sidewalk. And that's to keep uh, the view of the vehicles um, to provide some, some some amount of screening, and it also delineates the space, the parking space from the parking, uh, delineates the parking space from the public right away or the sidewalk. So, someone's parking in the in the parking space, they don't overhang or park onto the sidewalk and obstruct the sidewalk. The petitioner is proposing to modify the parking lot, and they are seeking. They do not want to put in the screening wall, so they're seeking a variance <coughs> from that standard. The screening walls are required along Elmhurst as well as Clawson. The parking spaces, as we know, based on the last case, we require a minimum length of 20 feet. The petitioner is proposing to restripe and uh, redesign some of the parking spaces. They would be at 18 feet in length. They're seeking a waiver from that difference of the length requirement. There's also a two-way drive aisle that doesn't meet the minimum width requirement for two-way traffic on a, on a drive interior drive aisle in the parking lot. And we require two parking spaces per dwelling unit. The site plan depicts 60 parking spaces. There are currently 42 one-bedroom apartment units. So they re currently they require 84 parking spaces. They're deficient in the, to the current standard. Again, conducting the interior renovations to make an additional parking space would require 
uh, an additional two parking spaces, which they simply don't have the ability to accommodate on site. They're seeking a waiver from that. And we do require a certain lot size requirement per the number of dwelling units. And they currently are in, not in conformance to that minimum lot size. Adding two additional units, not expanding the floor area of the building or the structure itself, but simply adding two more units would require them to be able to provide that additional lot size or lot area, which they simply can't meet. So they're seeking a variance or a waiver from that standard. We did receive one notice from an adjacent property owner oh, about a week ago, and that was attached at the uh, as the very last page in addition to this report since it's since it first went out. Any questions for Mr. Murphy? Let's start on this side this time, Mr. Clatt. Oh, um, Mr. Murphy, just one quick question. It's hard to tell from the drawings in the sites under construction, so it's hard to see the physical boundary of the lot. But is it? generally the same are the, the parking arrangements still the same based on the photo i'm looking at right now they still have basically two drive aisles so the same conditions exist correct so if the parking was quote unquote illegal then maybe it was short then it's going to be the same now is uh, that correct uh, this to, to some the degree the, the parking lot as you can see is is not in the best condition the petitioner is proposing to modify the parking lot, repave portions, redo the concrete, and stripe it. The photographs will illustrate that the striping probably was put in 40 years ago and no one's ever changed it since. You'll see some bumper blocks up against a portion, this portion of the building, and they're proposing to not, um, not replace those spaces, but to have that as an area where there's a drop-off box for mail. I'll say that those parking spaces are made up or recreated where the storage building is now. Storage building will be removed and parking spaces will be put in that place. So there's a little bit of a, a swap of removing them here because they don't think they function appropriately and putting them in a location where they would have gained access by removing that structure. Okay, it looks like they're removing the shed, but they're placing a new trash enclosure, so it's really no loss of square footage there either. New bike area, trash enclosure. I think they actually gain a few parking spaces the trash enclosure I believe is a little bit smaller than the existing storage building but there's no trash before so they're making right. a slight improvement correct yes and then the last question too is is it really a trade-off because there's a business use there right now that requires parking and then the apartment unit requires parking so is there really a difference in parking demand on the site based on what the trade-off is yeah we didn't under the ordinance we don't require, uh, we don't have a standard for uh, if you have a management office on site, and obviously that's pretty rare nowadays to have a management office on site. But you're, you're correct in this, theoretically, somebody would be working in the office at least a good portion of the day and uh, need to be there, get there somehow, you're typically in a car, and uh, whether Maybe that's replaced. It, it, could, it could be. Thank you. This is Carl. Okay, so. There's major construction going on in this place. I'm sure they've pulled a permit to do the construction. Yes, they're working with the building department and the engineering So department. by changing these two things that already exist, we've generated six variances needed? We looked at the, well, yes, in the, the last two, the lot size and the parking requirements were triggered by the interior renovations. The other variance requests, which are related to the parking structure and a parking surface parking lot, relate to the fact that they want to do modifications to the parking lot, and we need to ensure that those meet the minimum, the current standards. Uh, they want to not have to meet those standards, so we did re did bring them here for variance requests associated with it. Yes, if they were able to meet the standards in. They're in their redesign of the parking lot, those wouldn't be variance requests. Well, how do we issue a permit for this project with parking requirements? I mean, uh, certainly that those two little things can't change the parking to that. I mean, so how do we issue a permit based on the wouldn't they needed a parking variance to, to? Not for the interior renovations of existing apartment units. No. Mm -hmm. no. So what you then what you're saying is to change these this lobby in this office. Triggers into the last an two apartment, variances. there's six variances. Two. 
well, the parking lot. Well, I know, but there so. weren't any variances before, so all all they're doing is changing those two things into an apartment. And the parking lot modifications. Why? I mean, why wouldn't that have been there in the first place? Yes, it was, it was grandfathered in. We checked our records. We didn't have any variance, any history of variance requests associated with yeah. the original. Yes. I, my problem is I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding that minor change with generating six variance requests, where there weren't any, obviously, to renovate this entire building. And we may have had a different parking standard back in the day, perhaps like one and a half parking spaces per unit. Well, he's just pulled the permit, hasn't he? For the I mean, renovations to the existing dwelling units. For the so he's grandfathered in? If he didn't sure. do anything else? Sure, yes. To do, to do interior renovations to the existing apartment units? Correct. And if he wasn't, we'll say, touching the parking lot, uh, taking out sections of it, redoing it, restriping it, no, it would exist as it is. So no, there, would be no, there would be no variance request. So none of that was talked about when the original permit was pulled for this renovation? Or I, you probably don't know the answer to that. The petitioner can give some history. I do know that code enforcement was, was out at some point to remind him of permits that were needed. Can I Thank see you. hand on this side? Oh, I thought I did. I'm sorry. I guess one, this might be a tough one too, but are there any known complaints about parking in this subdivision right now with its current existence? Are there any known The issues? letter that was provided by the, the one adjacent, applicant? yes, they, they did reference reference that as a concern of theirs. If there is, I think we're going to hear about it anyway. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Is the petitioner present? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ms. Samurai, the owner of the complex. Um, thank you for giving us the opportunity <coughs> as for this variance. Um, currently, it's a 42-unit, one-bedroom apartment. Um, as Mr. Clatt indicated earlier, there was an office above and there was like a, it was more like a, a clubhouse because there was an existing pool on the site. It was taken out years ago before we purchased and acquired it. At that point, um, there, we wanted to take that empty space, unusable space, and convert it to a two bedroom. It's, the, the, the building's very dated. We wanted to put stucco, we, we submitted plans and some layouts on how we're gonna make the front of the 13 Lime, um, veneer stone, stucco, uh, veneer stone and stucco from the inside. We're not adding to the property size at all. I mean, building itself or property size. We currently have, um, from the design of, of, of the um, site plan, we have currently 60 car parking. Now, as anyone knows in the apartment industry, for a 42 one bedroom, that's actually a very good generous size. You know, you're usually gonna have 42 tenants. That's at 100% occupancy and you're gonna have 18 additional in addition to that. So even assuming that, if we had the other one, the other two bedroom that we're converting, we're not, we're not adding, we're not, you know, we're just converting the same space and converting it for usage instead of two employees there. Plus, keep in mind, when there was a, um, a clubhouse, there was more visitors. Because as you know, if you have a pool, you have more visitors, you know? We don't have that anymore. It's gonna be a quiet setting We've converted these properties. Uh, we did the one behind Trader Joe's on, um, on Farnham, and we take them, we take the distressed ones, completely gutted out from electrical to um, new appliances, new cabinets, recessed lights, new mains. Uh, we brought DTE out, Comcast. We took the overhangs on the buildings. There was grapevines on it. We're putting all new windows around the buildings, brand new front doors. The parking lot, as you can see, was not taken care of. Um, what happens is, is the way it was designed before, we have snow plow. We still were able to acquire the same amount of parking spaces and added to it because there was a shed in the middle and there was a garbage can at the end of, um, end of the parking, parking, uh, parking lot. Well, as you know, we're required to put a garbage enclosure now. And so I wanted to put it in the center of the parking structure, parking, I'm sorry, parking lot, so all the tenants could have equal distance to when they're throwing out their trash. And it's away from the streets where the residents driving by won't see it. It's gonna be enclosed. So yes, we did, we lost two, but we gained two because we took the shed out and where the garbage can was, we put it in the middle. So we didn't lose any. Now the question becomes is a couple of spices that if this is converted to a two bedroom apartment, there'll be two cars. We have 60 car parking on a 42 unit. That's 
unusual in the Royal Oak apartment industry. And um, I know when you when 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 you're requesting a variance, you're requiring it. But by no means are we um, are we going to have any difficulties saying that it's it's already over over ca uh, capacity. I think just the opposite. I think that we'll be comfortable. We won't, you know. Like I said, we had two offices in there, which required two employees. We're not going to have that. We have the clubhouse, which requires a lot more visitors. We're not going to have that. So it's going to be a more of a quieter setting. That's what we're proposing. Any questions? Yes, sir. Um, you've already answered the thing about you had two spaces already theoretically. So theoretically, if you have two bed, I always go by one car per bedroom because usually that ends up being a good rule when it comes to the apartments. Um, any reason why you couldn't uh, put the bike rack over by the mailboxes and taken that spot? Um, the, the, the snow, the, the mailbox, we have an electrical, I'm sorry, excuse me. We have electrical pole there. Mm -hmm. So that's dead space. Okay. And so we said, let's utilize it for the bike rack. You know, so we wanted to get efficiency. Okay. Any other reason why you couldn't put up the privacy walls that's part of the variance? The privacy walls is going to require, um, so we would have to put, it, it, it makes it difficult for that, those two parking spots coming from that spot to come around, turn around and park it. Uh, you know, it, it's, it makes it tighter. No, I understand. Yeah. Any other questions? Anthony, Anthony asked mine about the screen walls. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I would like to ver uh, clarify about the screening walls. So what is the variance being asked for regarding the screening wall between the public right-of-way, meaning sidewalk. the sidewalk on Elmhurst and the sidewalk on... Uh, the east and west side. Close. Close. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not between the personal residences. Yeah. Yes, sir. Two, and I was just thinking about it, to get away with not needing the variance on the aisle and the parking was there any thought that you turn this into a one way where you enter from Elmhurst and exit at Clawson so that you now can minimize the aisle in between a little bit tighter so you can get the overall there, there, There's depth? a couple of reasons. When, when people are parking, the flow, when, when garbage is picked up, when there's deliveries, it's, it's a routine that's just you create over there. Um, but it, it's, it's either just coming one way from that way or one way from this way. So. Well, that's why I was suggesting if if there's a flow already, why not do it to one way instead of having a two-way lane there? Now you can get deeper spots. Because what happens is some people live closer to the Clawson, and they're coming around and parking through there. And the only the only variance, we actually, um, we have 19 feet. It's not 18 feet um, on the site plan is because uh, we brought it when you have the overlap of the cars. Um, there's not, there's absolutely no issues with that. There's certain spaces on the site that could carry 20 feet that are overlapping into that. So that's not a problem at all. You're not going to have 60 cars that all have 20 feet cars. I mean, unless I, you know, I, I think that's highly unlikely. unlikely. So there's not going to be any cars sticking out because you're going to where you line the bumpers and overlaps that one foot. Any other questions for the petitioner? All right, so I'm going to ask you to take a seat and go ahead and open up the public hearing. Thank you for your time. Anybody who would like to address the ZBA on this matter, please raise your hand. You have three minutes to address us. Who would like to go first? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Tom Mervec. I live at 3204 Kloss in the second house down from the apartments uh, on that side. And, and there's a lot of people from the neighborhood there. And we have a couple of concerns. First of all, just speaking for myself, I think that uh, what, the, uh, what the owner is doing is magnificent. Um, it, the, the work has been very hard. The enclosed garbage is something that we've all wanted for many years, ever since we were chasing down rats in our yards quite a few years ago. So it's been poorly taken care of until now. Um, we have an existing problem on Clawson uh, with traffic. It has to do with the volume of traffic, the fact that there's a school at the end. Six times a day, there's heavy traffic. It's very difficult to turn left because of, uh, onto the street from 13 Mile because uh, of heavy traffic on 13 Mile. Um, traffic speeds. Uh, I don't think there's been any recent traffic studies. I requested one 23 years ago. I think that's the last one. Um, 
A young girl was hit on our street, fortunately, without injury. Uh, I've been passed on the street doing 25, and recently, about three weeks ago, I had my blinker on to turn left in my driveway, heard screeching brakes, and an embarrassed woman next to me was trying to pass me on my, on my left uh, while I was trying to turn. And uh, so this is something that, that the owner obviously uh, didn't, didn't hope for, uh, but it's a serious problem. Um, six uh, uh, arrival and dismissal times at the school per day, and sports, uh, soccer, and I think baseball uh, in the early evening hours. Um, for that reason, I, I, I would respectfully say that's another very good reason not to consider traffic exiting onto Clawson Avenue. It's, it's the biggest access street into that whole area. Um, I'm hoping, I don't think anybody can predict the future, but I'm hoping that you seem to be in agreement with 60 spots, parking spots being enough for uh, 43 apartments. I don't think any of us will know how many couples will be there or how many visitors will be coming to single uh, hardworking people who are paying a, what's going to be a fairly high rent. Um, and so I, I would at least request that we have another traffic study, uh, possibly before we approve that parking uh, request to, to cut the spots down to 60 and that we look at alternatives for keeping it high just in case, just in case there's a real rat's nest problem on the street. Um, that's all I have to say. Clear. Thank, you. Thank you, sir. And who's next? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. Daniel Lawrence, 3116 Elmhurst. Um, thank you for this. Because what I get in the mail is a card that doesn't really tell the whole story. But tonight we got the whole story. And the whole story is there's 42 current units, there's 60 parking spots. The petitioner's asking for one additional parking spot. But the card I got in the mail didn't tell the whole story, so for people out there, please get the whole story before you make a decision. I support this because I'm a resident there for 31 years. I've been in Royal Oak for 60 years, and I've seen a lot of change through Royal Oak, especially downtown. And the place that's currently we're talking about previously for the last 30 years has been falling down. It's been a mess. They've had a lot of problems with their construction. What they're doing down there is amazing. I go by, I see refrigerators and appliances. It's a complete rebuild. I agree with the gentleman back there about the traffic flow on Clawson because Elmhurst is an extremely wider street just because of its access. So I would definitely support the fact of looking and coming that. But I think this would be a complete asset to the city, especially to my area, because we're only talking about one thing, one additional unit. There was probably a variance back to the point earlier of one and a half per car slots or whatever. It doesn't really matter at that point. But I don't see this. I only see this as a bonus to the city, to our area itself, because he's going to be upgrading the uh, place. It's going to be looking a lot better. But I agree with the traffic flow. Please look into that, because I've been down through Clawson, and I've been down my street, and Clawson is a mess, especially when the schools are coming in and out. But um, I fully support this. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. And who wants to go next? Please. I'm Dorothea Cato, 3126 Elmhurst Avenue. Um, I'm in support of what they're doing to the building, and I think it's going to be great once they get it all finished. However, uh, I think Ms. Soto is the one that sent the – Letter in yeah. to you? Okay. And her concern is um, people parking, if they don't have enough spaces and it's two people parking for the one apartment, where the additional parking spaces is going to come from. And it's my concern, too, because I don't want to come home every day and parking is filled up in front of my house. And she has the same concern. I live right across the street. Uh, I see everything that's going on over there. And... Um, so that's our full concern. And then she was concerned, she asked me to mention, she was concerned about a wall that was there that needed some repair done to it. And uh, she asked me to mention that. I'm glad she sent the letter in to you. Um, so that's my biggest concern. When coming in and out of Elmhurst, um, there's hardly any space coming off of Linwood and we get people flying around Linwood 
on to Amherst going up to 13 Mile. So the traffic thing does need to be looked into again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And who's next? Yes, sir. I live at 3105 Clawson Avenue. Uh, I've been there since 1959. Hey, Kurt, we have the, your uh, name for the record. I know you. Oh, it's the Kurt von Eberstein. Thank you, sir. Uh, it was the Americana, then the North Point, and this current gentleman is, well, gave me a guided tour of one of the single bedrooms. And um, essentially, I'm, I'm all for it. I think it's a, a kind of an eyesore right now. It's been a mess. It's been a rat trap. Uh, it really isn't having any noise problems or anything like that. It's, I don't think it's been a police issue either. But uh, this improvement that he's described, uh, there are two homes that have been very hard pressed to sell across the street. And currently there's very little parking on Clawson on um, the 3225 side, the odd side, and then in his side. I know there would have to be some spaces away from 13 Mile uh, to allow people to turn and have clearance. And Al Elmhurst is the same situation. Elmhurst dead ends at Adams Elementary School. So it certainly isn't a traffic pattern. Um, so the entry exit idea is, is okay. Uh, most of the time, the traffic pattern going through the two aisleways is broad. The, the big garbage trucks go down there and they can pass uh, very clearly, and, and it's not a mad rush in the morning or a, a mad return home um, in the evening. Uh, it's not like New York crazy. Um, it's just a very, very um, big eyesore that needs this improvement. I'm, I'm very positive on the development of this, and I hope you guys approve it. Take care. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And who wants to go next? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Janet Von Eberstein, 3105 Clausen. If you have not had the opportunity to see the inside of these apartments, you need to. Um, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, about 30 years ago, I had the privilege or the unfortunate privilege of being in those apartments a long time ago, and it was downright scary. The parking lot has always been a mess. I can't imagine that we our traffic would be any worse because of the apartments. I mean, if you look at Jane Adams is down the street from us, the Clawson end of Jane Adams is the busiest end because that's where K-5 get dropped off and picked up. That's where most of the athletics are on that, are on that side. I loved your idea of the, the one way, but then as I thought about it, um, as Elmhurst is, um, doesn't go all the way through to Webster, that would add um, some traffic flow problems within that neighborhood. And I really believe, I mean, I've been down the street from this apartment for a really long time. I'm not sure that they're guilty of our traffic issues that we um, may have. I'm a little further down the street, about eight houses off of um, 13. So I don't see the same traffic problem, let's say that Mr. Mervac sees as he's closer to 13 mile. Um, but, um, because those folks are going to mostly enter and exit um, and use 13 as their throwaway. But um, anyways, if you get the opportunity to visit the property, you most certainly should. And um, I am totally in favor of what they're asking for. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Could I oh, ask you a questions. question? When you said the parking lot has always been a mess, what exactly did you are mean? Are you referring to me? That? Yes. Oh, um... Were you talking about a mess, like it, no place to park, or are you talking about it's just messy, there's Stuff. trash rolling around? And it's it's all broke. The concrete is broken okay. up. It um, there haven't Wanted been lines, so that you know cars have been everywhere. There have been um, before there would be like non-operating cars just you know left. Um, 
in the lot. There were um, boats or trailers. There was, there was stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. And who wants to go next? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Cindy Litvinovich. I live um, just a little bit beyond Essex on Elmhurst at 3028 Elmhurst. Um, we have noticed on occasion, well, when, before the construction started, there has been some parking issues on, um, on that stretch. And there's also another apartment complex on the other side. Um, I don't see a major problem with parking, but I, I, my main concern is screening. Um, I would like to see some kind of screening by the, the sidewalk. You can just go um, walk right past there. It is ugly, <laughs> really ugly. I don't know if, uh, if some kind of uh, natural greenery could substitute for a uh, cement wall or something like that. I've, um, my husband Ray and I were on the way here and we noticed that some apartment buildings had natural greenery uh, right next to the sidewalk and I don't know if that would suffice but I think something needs to be break up the distance between the sidewalk and the parking lot. It, uh, but uh, I do applaud the, the changes. Uh, we've passed by that garbage dump which was on Elmhurst <laughs> and I, I'm glad to not see that anymore. Um, but uh, I am uh, mainly concerned about the screening. I, I think we need some kind of differential there right be, be, be right by the sidewalk. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Going once, going twice? And I'm going to go ahead and bring it back to this side of the table for additional discussion. Hang on one second, Mr. Kroll. Oh, sir, would you come back up in case we have additional questions for you? And then the ball is yours. Yes, sir. I'm going to make a motion to approve variance A, B, C, E and F. We have a motion on the table. So everything except letter. Everybody sort of digest that since you pulled D. Well, <laughs> leave off a letter there, Alan. Or yeah, D. Yeah. He okay. skipped D. It says everything except the screen wall. Okay. I'll su I'll support. All right, we have a second. Floor is yours. I um. I don't know that I, I, I won't go back to that, but I, I think that's an interesting, uh, I think I've heard that a few times. Number one, I got to tell you folks, I, I'd like to move to your neighborhood. So suddenly do we get a great group of neighbors up here to support a great project. I did have the opportunity to go through one. Um, I, I just couldn't even imagine if I lived anywhere near there how excited I would be about this project. Um, to me, the, there were more people in the offices than converting that one. Um, I, I, I think this gentleman should get a beautification award. <laughs> I see the hardship for his sake that he didn't bring up the fact that they previously had the same number of people basically there and he's just offsetting it by just switching over from office to bedroom. So I, I don't see him adding anything really into adding one extra unit into there. Um, I think the beautification award might come after the <laughs> the wall, possibly. So, but that's another discussion. But other than that, I have no problem with uh, granting all the ones as part of this uh, variance. Mr. Clay, uh, just one question. I know the green screen was brought up along the east and west sides, but based on the site plan, I don't think that's achievable without reducing the parking any reducing yeah. the parking more. I do support the motion that's out there to add those walls. I think that will help to buffer that a bit. But it looks like only one location we could possibly add green, which would be inconsistent. So it would have to be some type of wall. <clears throat> Just to point that out. Any other questions? No more comments? All right, I will go ahead and call for the mode on, on the motion, which includes A, B, C, E, and F. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That brings us back to item D, Mr. Kroll. Would you like to jump back in? Yeah, I, I guess I want some. I want to bring this back to the table and get some comments from my fellow board members. Um, I, I, I was going to ask the two architects. I mean, do we want to trade in a couple parking spaces for a screening walls? Well, a thirty-inch high wall is not too high. 
Um, it's just something to get a rather thin, granted, who knows how strong it is, but you could get a thin four-inch concrete or masonry wall that could easily get even an eight-inch one, but that bites into the parking there. Does that mean they scoot that parking down a little bit closer to those mailboxes? Yeah, and on Clawson. Does that mean you maybe scoot uh, the ones on Elmhurst just a little bit farther in to change that 36.7 to maybe 36 feet? Yeah, you could do that. Um, with the garbage thing, do you cheat a little bit over and come eight inches? That it, I, It's all possible. I, it's up to them as to whether or not they really want to do that. I understand that adds cost, and they may not want to do that, but uh, I think for safetyness, it, it's definitely safer, in my opinion, because as a car pulling in, at least now that wall is going to prevent them from accidentally going into the sidewalk area where they could clip a person, whether they're meaning to or not. So for safety's sake, I'm going to vote that one way or another that this variance needs to be met. Um, just on the sake of safety. Uh, yeah, I think Mr. Olfak raises a very interesting point from the fact that when I was looking at the configuration of the wall, typically when we talk about a 30-inch screening wall, that's largely to, to, re to prevent lighting issues from cars. But obviously the cars are going to be parallel north and south and not bleeding into the neighborhoods east and west. So therefore a different type of barrier to create the safety that you're talking about does not necessarily have to be a solid wall because we're not talking about a lighting issue. Whose hand did I see next? Well, Ms. Amson, I was please. wondering about for question for Joseph. So we're talking about the screening walls on Clawson and Elmhurst, right? So you know how Royal Oak will move a sidewalk for a tree? Can they cut into that little edge common area if they needed some space for that? <coughs> they wall? could, but I think the petitioner would be capable of obtaining a precast wall that doesn't require a footing. It sits between two steel channels that are, mm -hmm. have footings in the ground, and it's just a precast section of wall like this piece of paper, and you slip it between the channels and it just rests on the ground. Doesn't require a footing. Like you said, very thin, very easily accomplishable, very cheap. Okay. Can I propose something else? Please. Yeah. As, as you can see, this is a big parking spot, and I'm trying to bring greenery, trying to make it look residential. Like I said, um, we, in fact, in the corridor, because there was a pool before, the sidewalks were much bigger because it was like a pool. So in, during the pool, you get chairs to lay out, kids to sit around and everything. So we're going to have a huge landscape area. If anything, I would request that I'm able to put maybe a varieties wall where I could, if I have to cut some from the garbage enclosure, an inch from every parking spot, and I was able to gain 10, 12 feet, something you... I, I don't want to put any more blocks over there because it just it looks too industrial. If you want to bring any kind of, you know, some nice mulch and and and, and varieties that separates it, I would like to see more greenery there if I, if I was allowed. How, how do I adjust my motion to? You can you could you could grant the waiver from the 30 inch masonry high screening wall, uh, contingent upon installation of. Uh, Evergreen shrubs. I like that. I'll make that motion. Well, we have a motion. We don't even have a second yet. So yeah. let's. Does right. somebody want a second? It just for. Well, I wanted to question. Sure. Because he was bringing up about the only way to do that is by sneaking a couple inches off the parking spot. If the parking spots right now meet variance, we'd have to somehow. <laughs> Put that within the motion, would you would not? not? Not the width, just the length, I believe. Yes. It, oh, okay. Yes. Petitioner has indicated that he can I, I could grab an inch from probably um, 40 cars, so I, I gained 20 inches on each side. The garbage enclosure doesn't have to be 18, 18 feet wide. I could make it 17 and still be very functional. Um, so I, I would get it without disturbing any kind of variance on the width of the car. The, what you're talking about is the length, the okay. 20 feet or 19. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it, it it wouldn't disturb that by no means. I, I yeah. I'm... Right, we're still looking for a I'll second. second. Yeah. Okay, we have a second then, uh, Mr. Curtis. No, I was going to second. But right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let you guys go ahead. Is there any other comments? Just, on this? just quick, I, I agree that you can. There's 36 foot seven of space in between. You can make that work. Yes. So. 
I, I, I see no issue with that. And I, the green, I, the greenery actually like like we don't when when, when it's asphalted and striped and cleaned up. I, I promise you, I invite you guys all to come in there and take a look at before and after, like I did the one on Farnham behind Trader Joe's. Mm -hmm. uh, we spent enormous amount of money on renovation. We take pride in it. Um, we're looking for the millennials, the high end users. I, I have tenants that are doctors, Botsford nurses at Beaumont, engineers at GM, people that work for Fox News are renting from in that site. I'm looking, I'm targeting those type of tenants. In order for you to target those type of tenants, I believe if you're a terrible landlord, you usually get those type of tenants that you're gonna have that. I wanna create you know, a home feeling, the same age group, and that's, that's the areas we're targeting for. So we really go all out when we go to fix these places. And when I tell you go all out, we're spending, I mean, for example, the storages, you know, you go in there and they see fence storages. I bring mine out of cinder blocks. I bought 5,000, 6,000 uh, cinder blocks downstairs because there used to be all this space over there because there was a pool. We, we, we trucked them down and created out of steel door and cinder blocks. That's my storages. So there's no, there's no half-stepping in anything that I, I, I would invest in the city of Royal Oak. No, and, and that's kind of why I pulled that off because I think that that screening kind of finishes it off. Yes, and we want some greenery. I mean, we love greenery. The parking lot's so massive. I think bringing a cinder block is just, if I could if I could bring greenery, yeah. give the privacy, you know. And we love it. Okay. Can I see some nodding head in the audience? You guys okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> The, I've seen what the transformation you did over at Trader Joe's. Yes. That one looks absolutely beautiful. Thank you. I drive by there. You did a great job. <coughs> Thank All right, you. then I will call for the vote on this portion of the uh, motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? You're all set. Thank you, sir. You guys thank have a good day. Thanks for building it. And thank you all in the audience, really. Yeah, it, it's, it's really a pleasure. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was clapping for that. Can I ask you, to, if you want to have conversations, please take it out in the hallway so we can finish up. I know he's got some comments today. Oh, yeah. He did a lot of work this afternoon. He did some really good analyzation. <laughs> Can we just bottle this meeting? I know. It's like I've never seen this before in all my years of zoning. It's like people point. don't come to say nice things. So that moves us along to item 2E, which is other business. All right. So, well, I do have one thing. I actually ended up sitting down with the uh, the guys. <laughs> folks? Hello. Folks? Hello. Folks? Hello? Hello? Guys. You guys. <laughs> you <-hoo. laughs> You're in it. <laughs> Folks! Hey guys. Sir. I'll wait, please. <laughs> oh, I'll say something. Oh, no worries. Clyde, I'd like to say something. I could. I'm going to give you the floor. Okay. You'll, you'll get the floor, I promise. <laughs> I was uh, speaking with the mayor and the mayor pro tem, and it's been quite some time since we've had a meeting between the ZBA and the plan commission jointly mm -hmm. to discuss whatever issues we may have, visions that we have for the city. In thinking about it a little bit further, it sort of occurred to me, because we all, I think, have our pet peeves and our things we like, things we don't like, what have you. Maybe next month we come back and maybe put together a list of items that perhaps we would like to discuss with the plan commission and then at that point we can discuss a joint meeting or would you like to set up a joint meeting? Does the group want to have a joint meeting? I'll just throw the ball out there and whoever wants to jump in. Oh, I, I think, oh sorry, ladies. Well, I was going to say I thought we tried this before but the planning commission never wanted to meet. <laughs> uh, they're, right? they're, they've tasked Sweet. our office to look at the standards related, a variety of standards related to multiple family residential developments. And so we are working on that. And it would be wise, and they've suggested to have a study session uh, specific to multifamily developments. And uh, they invited, they, they are interested in having the zoning board members attend to hear the variance requests uh, that you see and, and get your take on why you grant certain variance requests and others and, and proposals like tonight, what you've seen and see how they relate to 
our current ordinance requirements and how we may analyze uh, potentially modifying those. So we, I don't know that we need to come up with a list. They've narrowed it down to multifamily. Okay. Yeah, so okay. that's, that's the topic. Uh, it's a big topic, believe me. Oh. And <laughs> it will lead to a very long conversation, productive conversation. And we, they, they would welcome having all of you there to, to have a study session. I'll, I'll go. To what end? What's the goal of a joint meeting? Sure. That is to be determined. But they do want to analyze our current standards to see if they're in line with uh, trends that we've been getting and uh, older developments like this one. This one was built clearly without two parking spaces per unit. It's required to have two parking spaces for any modification that they wanted to do. Uh, is that a burdensome standard for them? Is that normal? Is our, We're hearing from neighbors. Uh, the Planning Commission doesn't necessarily know all the comments that you hear from neighbors, so you can share those. They can share with new developments that they've seen that are very dense and taller. Um, it's, not, it's not only about parking, it's about lot size, height standards, the design, uh, amenities of what we're seeing, what the market trends are, and what we're gravitating towards and whether our ordinance is necessary to be, it's necessary to modify it in its entirety, in certain aspects, create news districts maybe. It, there's a wide variety of topics and it starts with a good conversation and research. I mean, I know for me, and it came up again last month, we had somebody who wanted to add an addition to their home and they had a corner lot. And because they had a corner lot, because of how we use the setbacks for both the front yard and the side yard, if they would have proposed the exact same thing at the lot next door, he would have signed off on it administratively. But instead, last month, our conversation sort of drifted into, well, are there enough windows? Is Are there enough architectural features? And the reality is the house next door, he just signs on the dotted line and none of those questions get asked. And you gave me a number. Isn't something like 90% of our corner lots do not meet code in terms of the setbacks? So we have, you know, if we have 20,000 dwellings in Royal Oak, 2,000 of them, if they want to do something to their house, there's a good chance, instead of just being signed off administratively, they've got to plunk down the money, they've got to come here, kiss the ring, and hope it works out well. And I think it's inequitable. Let's not give up the money. <laughs> but isn't that city commission who changes the ordinance? No salary, right? At the end of the day since it's a, since it's a city ordinance the city commission has to approve has to approve it but they they defer all of the potential ordinance zoning ordinance changes to the planning commission uh, obviously this board doesn't write the ordinance but they do whatever the saying is the, yes them. exactly so yeah. they're they're seeking your input because they set them and they say eh, we're done those got to be great and then we find you, out you, they're not yes, always good. Yes, and that's they want to hear from, from you and I'm in. get your experience. Part of, part of the problem in doing that, though, and generalizing, is like you take those corner lots. I mean, you can say they're all good, but then, you know, half of them look terrible. So I don't know how you just kind of land up in one place on that. And you, and you might not. Yeah. You might not. I mean, that, my, that's, my, I that's where there needs to have a conversation and the research. I mean, my good feeling was, and I don't know, there obviously is never a perfect answer, but if you do a review of the block in question and the corner lot would have been signed off administratively on 75% of the properties on the block, then you've hit a threshold where that corner lot should get the same consideration. I mean, there's a lot of ways you could tackle it, but... Well, the Planning Commission does want to look at the multiple family standards. It sounds like you want to look at single family standards, too. You'll have, you'll have to request a separate meeting for that. They want, they want to focus on multiple family I think, first. I think we need to focus <laughs> on that because, I mean, based on everything you hear, we're going to have 1,000, 1,500 new residences. We don't have room for one, so it's going to be multifamily. And but the, then the question project. is, where is, where is it appropriate? It may not necessarily be appropriate everywhere. Or it may. Yes, and that's where we need to have that conversation. Look at the map, look at trends, look at settings. Absolutely. Do we need a motion? Not at this point. Um, okay. They uh, anticipate setting uh, setting a date when they meet next time. I think um, we should all go. Yeah, so I don't have a date. <laughs> well, it uh, turns out we have schedules, too. Yeah. Can we help set a date? <laughs> yes. You certainly may. There are stuff to do, Paul? <laughs> I will say we have three, my life. three cases for next month for May. They're, they're all single-family properties of, of similar nature to what you referenced. Um, you never know how long it's going to take to get through uh, them, but if you want to offer up 
I won't be eight o'clock as a study month. session next month, and we can pass it on to them. Or actually, let's uh, let's think about that because they won't meet. They need to to meet and accept your date if you offer a date. If you offer a date two days after their meeting, that may not be enough lead time for them. All right, the right, right. So that's where it gets tricky into setting a date and a time. If you want to offer we'll something, work go through, right ahead. We'll work through, through you. Special Tuesday, meeting Tuesday we meet Thursday. Why not meet Wednesday in between? Uh, we could let, why don't we let staff special. handle that throughout a few dates? We could handle it electronically yeah. via email and, sure. and try and vote. I don't, I don't anticipate it happening next month, probably uh, in, in June. Our last You're month. right, something like a Wednesday, or if there's a light agenda on either the Planning Commission yeah. or Zoning Board in June, yeah, we, can, we can tack it on. Yeah. And it would be something as a study... Uh, a study session we would we would um, go into the into the room 309 and the public is certainly welcome to sure. to come but it's a more informal setting so if you want to invite the planning commission you can all make them all stand up and talk in front of the they don't, you know that's <laughs> the intent is to be able to go in the back room and have frank conversations and again that's all of it open to the public it's just a more casual setting so that's 18 people plus Mm -hmm. Plus Potentially, um, unless we decide we want to, if everyone can attend, that if we want to move it to a different location yeah. like police conference room yeah. or the library room. That ain't going to hold. We'll figure that out as yeah. we move along. Yeah. All right, so that sounds like it's well established, so I'm going to give the floor to Amanda. Yeah. And to let her introduce the mystery motion. And I guess it's not a mystery motion, so we're um, moving to Cincinnati, and so it will no longer be for the board, but... Um, I've lived here right after college, 20 years, and it's been an amazing experience and just amazing city. So, and you served on the DDA. Yeah, I was on the DDA as well, and so uh, yeah, just been a great experience and kind of sad to see moving away, but at the same time, it's great to see the new progress of everything. It's just amazing what's happening here. So, I appreciate meeting all you guys and it's been great having yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Good luck. We'll see you. Yeah. Good luck. Ohio. What's we'll need it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, we're going to live in Covington, so my husband's oh, working in Cincinnati, but we're going to move in. No, I love Covington. It's got a little more. Um, this hopefully, nobody in Cincinnati is watching this. But <laughs> 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 That's a really nice part of Cincy, too. Though. Yeah, yeah. Covington has just a little more uh, yes. flair. Fun. Yeah. Close good. to the airport. Well, the floor is yours. Oh, oh. Motion to adjourn? Yes. No, I've never <laughs> done that before. Or. <laughs> We have a motion to adjourn and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>